The story comes to us from Reuters.com. Out of Denver, Colorado. <clears throat> That's right, Denver taxpayers. You get to pay again. Make it rain with your tax money. Because a federal court on a federal court jury on Friday awarded $14 million to a dozen activists who sued Denver police, claiming excessive force was used against peaceful protesters during the racial justice demonstrations in the, following the death of George Floyd. Now, the city of Denver has previously settled several civil complaints stemming from the police response to the George Floyd protests, but the lawsuit decided Friday was the first such case in the nation to go to trial, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, and they represented several of the plaintiffs. <clears throat> so as you see, the ACLU ain't playing. That's right, if you violate people's rights, now the ACLU is just like, we're getting involved. Let's do it. 12 people claim officers violated their rights during the protests of the George Floyd protests in the summer of 2020. A jury heard allegations of excessive force and police brutality, and now we have their verdict. Also here, taxpayer money. This is taxpayer money, and from what I understand, the city of Denver is self-insured. Now, the lawsuit was filed in June of 2020, led a federal judge to issue a temporary injunction barring police in Denver from using tear gas, plastic bullets, flashbang grenades, and other less than lethal uh, force unless proved by a senior officer in response to specific acts of violence. Now, did you hear that? Tear gas, plastic bullets, flashbang grenades, other less than lethal, they couldn't use unless approved by a senior officer. How many think that a senior officer would be like a sergeant would go, oh, we can't do that. Nope. Nope, we've got an injunction by the courts. No, they'll use it, and then Hill, the sergeant, will go, yeah, put in your report. This is what happened. We, it was an act of violence. We feared for our lives. We had to use it. There you go. They basically left the fox in charge of the hen house. What they did. After a three week long trial and about a half day of deliberations, the jury in the case late this afternoon found in favor of all 12 plaintiffs and awarded them a total of $14 million. All the plaintiffs were involved in protests in Denver against police brutality. It was late May, early June of 2020, right after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. They said dozens of officers were injured during the protests by rocks and other things thrown at them by the protesters. And they estimate that millions of dollars of property damage was caused. Now the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man during his arrest in Minneapolis by a white officer, of course you know the story, um, ignited a wave of protests against police brutality and racial injustice in the summer of 2020 in cities across the country, including Denver. And several of them now are, uh, several of the protesters are filing lawsuits just like this one. Now, while the lawsuit brought by Denver activists acknowledged that some protesters engage in lawless behavior, it said that the vast majority were peaceful and accused police of engaging in heavy-handed uh, riot control tactics without issuing clear warnings and orders to disperse, which is, you know, that's what they do. They... Just they see somebody, hey, there's somebody right there. Let's get him. You're supposed to disperse. Bam, bam, bam. Like, whoa, dude, what's going on? The largest individual award was $3 million, went to Zachary Packard, who was struck in the head by a projectile, fired from a police shotgun, and he suffered a broken jaw and broken skull, two fractured spinal discs, and bleeding in the brain, according to the lawsuit. Lawyer Tim McDonald told jurors there's a widespread custom and practice of violence and aggression against protesters, uh, and that was the plaintiff's lawyer. A lawyer defending the city, Lindsay Jordan, argued that police had to make a split-second decision in a chaotic situation. Some protesters, Jordan said, started fires and broke windows in the state Supreme Court building and a nearby museum. So that's reason to, you know, split-second decision. Hey, I'll just beat up everybody and say, 
I had to do it, man. I just, it was a split second decision. Lindsey Jordan, that's not called police practice. That's called anarchy by the police department. The plaintiffs and their lawyers said they were protesting peacefully, exercising their First Amendment rights, and did nothing to deserve what they got from Denver police, specifically sprayed with tear gas and shot with pepper balls, among other things. Once again, at the end of the day, in a long trial, the jury found in favor of all 12 plaintiffs awarding them $14 million, a major defeat in court today for the Denver Police Department and the city of Denver. Now, she said when justifiable anger turns to violence and destruction, it's the responsibility of police to intervene as a matter of public safety. It's the responsibility of police to enforce the law against lawbreakers. We still have a right to peaceably assemble in this country. If people are not peaceably assembling, then you go after them and you do what you got to do to enforce the law. But when they're beaten on people that are abiding by the law, when they're smacking people that are abiding by the law and saying, well, you're, they're, they're part of the protest, they're exercising their First Amendment right to peaceable, uh, peaceably assemble. And you get these bootlickers that go, well, yeah, everybody's out of the protesters out there burning stuff up. Not the people that were peaceably holding signs and getting shot with projectiles. In a statement issued following the verdict, the city's Department of Public Safety, which oversees the police department, said officers had made mistakes, but the protests were unprecedented in scope. So they became cops, right? Nobody forced these guys to become police officers. And she said, you have to make split-second decisions. Exactly. You have to make decisions. They have to be the correct decisions. The statement from the city goes on, the city had never seen that level of sustained violence and destruction before. The city has already implemented policy changes in the aftermath of the protests, the department said, including enhanced officer training for crowd management, eliminating the use of some less than lethal weapons and new guidelines for the use of pepper spray. So in other words, oops, we goofed, but hey, you know, it's not our fault. Now we're going to make changes. So I can go out and break the law and go, I goofed. <laughs> Let me make some changes and I'll get back with you guys. Is that okay? No, you're going to jail. That's what they say. But Denver taxpayers make it rain.